Welcome back to the Lights Out podcast. Bedtime stories for boys and girls for when the lights go out. Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you all tucked up and ready for another Lights Out bedtime story? Well, you're in for a treat tonight because we're on Super Story September and I'm reading a story that I wrote or told. And tonight's story is called Shirley and the Dragon. Once upon a time, there was a girl called Shirley. She was about eight years old, and she lived in a house with only her mum. But her mum was not the kind of person that would take too much interest in her own daughter. And she didn't really listen to Shirley or what she had to say, and she didn't really look at her directly in the eyes like most mums do. She tended just to talk at her, even though she was doing some other things. And so when Shirley was having breakfast, and mum was washing the dishes, talking at her, she would be saying things like, Shirley, make sure you eat all your breakfast. Shirley, did you do your homework for school last night? Shirley, eat your food and go and put your clothes on. (sighs) Yes, mum. Shirley would reply, knowing fine well that her words would fly past the mum. Shirley was quite used to this, because mum always talked at her without looking at her, and most of the time she'd even had her back turned to her. So when Shirley was doing her homework, mum was watching telly and shouting, Shirley, have you finished your homework? Quickly finish it and go and wash your face and go to bed. When she was brushing her teeth from the other room. Shirley, have you finished brushing your teeth yet? Come on, hurry up. When she was in bed, her mum would come in and be tidying her room and saying things like, Quickly, get to sleep. Are you not asleep yet? And so, this was just something she was used to. However, there was something quite special about Shirley's house. It had a magic bathroom. And Shirley didn't know about it until one day, you see. Shirley didn't have a shower. She just had a bath in the bathroom. And her mum would fill up the bath full of water and make sure it was nice and hot. She would put in some toys and then Shirley would get in the bath to have a wash. As she was doing this, her mum would usually start to wash the bathroom. And as she was cleaning the sink and washing the floor, And doing all that kind of stuff, she would be cleaning the mirror, making sure that the bathroom was all clean. But one day, as her mum was cleaning the sink, she was complaining to Shirley quite a lot. You should have a bath more often, Shirley. All your friends have baths every day. Why don't you want to get in the bath? She was complaining so much, Shirley didn't want to hear it. So, she took a deep breath and slipped underneath the water so she couldn't hear her mum complaining. But suddenly, as soon as she slipped her head underneath the water and popped back up again, she was in the river, next to a big castle. She had all her clothes on. In fact, as she looked down, she had the clothes of night on. What's going on? She couldn't believe it, so she put her head back under the water in the river and she came up back in the bathroom. Mum, Mum, where have I just been? Of course, her mum wasn't listening. She was still complaining about Shirley's homework and schoolwork and packing her bags for the next day. So Shirley went to bed that night thinking, what just happened in the bath? under the water. Well, she couldn't wait until the next time she had a bath to see what was going to happen again. And so, on the next day, Shirley's mum said, Right, Shirley, time for a bath. I'm going to run the water and I'm going to start cleaning the sink. So her mum filled the water up to the top with nice hot water and put some toys in for Shirley. As she got up, The water went up to her shoulders and the mum started complaining again. 
talking about homework and food and schoolwork and friends and all that kind of palaver. So, as her mum was complaining and not looking as usual, Shirley slipped her head under the water again. <gasps> and she came back. And there she was, in the river next to the big castle. This time, she jumped out of the water and started to walk around the huge castle. It was gigantic, with big gates. She wanted to get across, but it was up. The drawbridge was up. She threw a stone at the gates, and the gates went down ever so slowly. As soon as the gates touched the ground, she walked over the water, and she was in the castle. She could hear lots of noises, and then... Loud noises with some screaming. It was so scary that she just ran back and jumped in the water. And as soon as she jumped in the water and lifted her head up, she was back there in a bathroom. Her mum was still washing the sink and complaining. So Shirley quickly jumped out of the bath. <sighs> Have you finished washing? You've only been in there like a second. No, I haven't because she knew that she'd been outside for like 20 minutes around the castle. I've, I've, I've been a while. I've been having a bath. No, you haven't. You've been like five seconds. Shirley couldn't believe it, so she quickly jumped back in and washed herself and gave herself for shampoo. And she went to bed that night and had a bad dream. In the dream, she heard the terrible noises again, and she was stuck in that dream in that nightmare, for what seemed like an eternity. But the funny thing was, in the dream, she did actually get to walk around the castle, and she could hear the screams, and she saw that it was a princess stuck in the tower, and the terrible noise was a huge dragon wrapped around the tower, trying to breathe fire into the window to get the princess. It was quite a terrible dream, but she knew it was just a dream. And so she took the time to walk around the dream and figure out how to save the princess. She could see that the terrible dragon was wrapped around the tower and probably wasn't going to let go. Hmm, I don't know what to do, she thought. And then she woke up. Shirley, it's time for school. Her mum said, as she was getting the clothes out of the closet. Shirley spent the day in a school, and at lunchtime, she would run to the library to find the books about dragons and how to get dragons away from towers with princesses in. Maybe even how to kill one. She spent the whole hour of lunchtime in the library, and just as she was about to leave, she spotted a book right up high on the top shelf and she saw the shiny dragon on it. She asked Mr. Jeff to get it for her and she went up the ladder and brought it down. When the bell rang for school back to class she put it in a bag and ran down the stairs. On the bus on the way home she started to read all about how to uh, get dragons off towers how to attack them, how to scare them, and even how to kill them. She took the book home, and after she'd done all the homework, she brought out the book as she was lying in bed, and on the last page, she found out that dragons are scared of water, and that they're scared of really high-pitched noises like squeals or screams, and that if you whistle really, really high-pitched, or if you make a really loud, high-pitched noise. The dragons don't like that and they will fly away. And so, she had a dream again that night. And as she was dreaming, she had to look around to see how she could make the noises and how she could get the water. She knew it was just a dream again. And even though she could hear the screams of the princess and the roars of the dragon and feel the fire, the flames coming from the dragon, she knew that she would wake up soon, but she had to work fast. 
She knew she was wearing the knight's armour, so she could take off her helmet, fill it full of water, and if she could somehow swing it around and throw it at the dragon, that might work. But what about the noise? Ah, <gasps> that's it. She remembered one time a long ago that her daddy had showed her how to make a noise, like a high-pitched noise, by putting a piece of grass in his thumbs and blowing through it. Well, she thought that if she did that, if he swung it around, it would make a whirling noise, really high and loud. So she thought what she could do is, she could get some string, get some of the grass, tie it to her helmet, her knight's armour helmet, and fill it up full of water. And if she swung it around and around and around, it would make a really high pitched noise. And then let it go, and it went flying to the dragon. So that's what she tried, and it seemed to work. She woke up the next day, and she went to school, knowing that tonight was going to be bath night, and that she had to save the princess, or else maybe, maybe the dragon would get her. She ran home off the bus and said to her mum, Mum, can I have a bath early tonight, before dinner? Okay, but make sure you have your dinner afterwards. And so her mum filled up the bath to the top with nice hot water as usual and started to clean the sink. Shirley got into the bath quickly and slipped under the water and went back up. There she was in the river again next to the castle. She thought she had to hurry up, so she jumped out, took off her helmet, found a piece of string that was lying behind the wall, tied it to the helmet, got some grass tied a little knot like Daddy had showed her, put it on a string, filled the helmet full of water and started to swing. She swung it around and around and around and after a few minutes the noises started to come out really loudly. She looked up at the tower with the dragon wrapped around. He stopped breathing fire. His head turned and looked straight at Shirley. Oh my gosh, she thought. She swung faster and faster and the noise got louder and louder and soon the dragon looked scared. His head started shaking and he covered his ears with his big wings and he jumped off the tower and flew away. She didn't even have to throw the water at the dragon. So she stopped swinging and she held it in her hand. She looked up at the princess who was looking out of the tower to Shirley with a big smile and a look of relief on her face. But then, as she was looking at the princess, the princess's face turned really scared. And she said, look out! The dragon flew back and tried to blow the fire at Shirley and tried to grab her. But as Shirley crouched down, and the dragon passed over. She knew she had to swing the water again and again, and she swung it round and round and round her head. The noise was coming louder and louder, and the dragon grabbed its ears so that it couldn't fly properly, and it fell onto the ground just in front of Shirley. Shirley let go of the helmet full of water, and it flew right and hit the dragon in the belly, and the water splashed up all the belly and onto the neck, and the water made the dragon start to melt. The dragon flew off, and Shirley could watch it flying away into the distance, and knew that it wasn't going to come back. She ran up the tower, opened the door to the princess, and the princess said, Thank you so much, you saved my life. I don't think the dragon's ever going to come back again. I hope not, said Shirley. And if it does, get some water. And here, I'll show you how to make this high-pitched noise with some grass. And so Shirley taught the princess how to do it. And the princess told her daddy, the king, and the king told all the soldiers and all the men. So they all had these whistly things that they could swing around. And they all had water ready to put in their helmets that they could swing so that if a dragon came back 
they could defend the castle and the princess. Shirley was happy because she'd done all of this by herself, and she went back and jumped in the river and disappeared and came back up again, and she was in the bathroom with her mum, and her mum was looking at her, saying, You're under the water for a few minutes, are you all right? I thought you'd drowned. And Shirley said, Yes, I am all right. And so now, now that Shirley knew that she had this magic bath full of water, every so often, about once a month, she'd go back under the water, just come out in the river to check that the castle was all right. And every time there were no dragons, so she knew that she'd done a good job. She'd been able to save the princess from a dragon. So now she had to work out how to get her mum to look at her when she spoke to her. But that's just another story. The end.